and Draymond clapping back with, well, you're going to be ringless just like them. Respect. When Draymond says respect, he means the opposite. Um, Vinny, we both sincerely respect your opinion on all things NBA and otherwise, specifically music, but in general. Um, is this Draymond podcast storyline, is it a thing or are people blowing it out of proportion? I don't know if it's a thing. You know what the thing is? It better be the Draymond Green show tonight on the floor. Because if it's not, the Warriors are going to go down 3-1. Like, I think that's the biggest thing is that, and and maybe I'm a little off, but I feel like the Warriors are being way too cool about the clear and present danger that's in front of them right now. You know what I mean? Like, there's a line between confidence and not being too concerned and being completely, you know, blissfully unaware of what's in front of you right now. And I don't, I don't think they're there. But I do think they're a little bit on the cool side about this. And granted, these have been three totally different games. Like, I couldn't have predicted yeah. this to play out any way that it has. But the one thing I have to say is that Draymond Green has to play better. Like, he has to play with some force. He has to look at the rim. He has to attack the rim. If he doesn't, I don't know if there's a path for Golden State to win tonight or in the rest of this series, however long it's going to go. Why, why do you think, uh, Drake, because I'm, I'm fascinated with the podcast stuff too. Why do you think he's not playing better on the floor? Like, like he's averaging five points a game, as you see here, and he had two points in the last game. He had really bad shooting in game one. What do you think is going on with him? Just Draymond, the basketball player. I mean, I think it's like fairly obvious that there's two bigger dudes on the other side than Draymond's asked to be the big man. You know what I mean? Like, we get we get the Warriors a lot of praise for their depth lineups and all that stuff, right? But they he, they always hit big guys, even if it was just Zaza Pachulia or Andrew Bogut. You know what I mean? There, there always was some big dude who was seven feet tall that could take the beating. They're, they're, they don't have that guy now. And Kevon Looney, he only plays 17 minutes, and you only can play him 17 minutes because you need more offense on the floor. So it's almost like whenever you're trying to plug one leak, you're springing another, and it's leaving Draymond in a spot where he's going against two bigger, longer, more athletic dudes, and those shots at the rim ain't going to be shots at the rim. And it's just perimeter defense at every level. Like, this Boston defense is really, really, really good. I know Holly put on his green – you know, his Boston Celtics green underwear before every game and picked them in five. But I don't think even if it turns out to be five, nobody could have truly expected this. And the thing about Draymond, too, you leave my underwear I mean, alone. Game. Like Mike Smith, Mike Smith already got my house wired, got my house bugged. And now and now, you know, now you all up in my underwear. What's, what's up? I thought this is I thought this is a brotherhood. I thought this is a brotherhood. My bad. My, my bad, my bad. I'll, I'll, I'm, I'm going to let y'all live because it's Boston and Boston going to get on me for anything that I say. But I'm going to say this. I do think it's funny. I do think it's funny. I was at the Boston Garden for towards the end of shoot around. On the floor, it's a whiteout tonight. <laughs> oh, no. oh, you mean, oh, in terms of like the, the fan. I mean, I know what you're saying, but like the T-shirts, <laughs> I, I know what you're saying. But the, Shame on really, you. this is a is this a promotion for the Shame team? Shame on you! Is it a promotion for the team? <laughs> I know. I mean, I'm just, just you know. I, I know. I know. I get it. I get the joke. But we I'm asking, it. like, in all seriousness, is it a promotion for the team as well? Uh, at two as well, also. <laughs> okay. Um, that was, you, were, you were sitting on that one. You were sitting on that one. Yeah, he was. He was <laughs> good he way. Was like, I got. He's like, I'm, it, he's like, I'm gonna kill him somehow. You I'm had that, you had that worse. I'm sitting on some worse. I'm gonna tell y'all don't sit on some worse. Okay, all right. You I had got, that joke laid I'm out, out just like you had that joke laid out, just like that first day of school outfit, just like the t-shirts they got laid out at the garden. You had that joke laid out. Um, but Draymond though, nine points, seven assists, five rebounds in a game two performance in which many credited him with being the driving force, emphasis on force behind the Warriors bounce back win. So as, as we know, I know y'all know this already. It's typically not the numbers with Draymond that quantify his impact on the game. He just looked out of it, which I think leads to questions whether they're legitimate or not. It leads to questions about your focus when you look out of it uh, from game to game. Okay, so he says he's playing uh, how effectively certainly remains to be seen. So let's assume that we see Steph in some approximation of the Steph that we've seen through the first three games with, with who has been 
with apologies to Jason Tatum, the best player in this series so far. Um, but let's go back to Draymond's initial gripe with the question best about shooter. his podcast. Let's, let's go. Let's go X's and O's uh, when it comes to this series. What adjustment the, 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 the Warriors haven't grown <laughs> since game three. Mm -hmm. They haven't gotten taller. They haven't gotten mm -hmm. bigger. What adjustment schematically can they make other than playing with more force and not being soft to as Draymond said they were and he was what else can they do to even this series and not fall in this 3 one hole that clear and present danger that you described a second ago Vinny. Nothing and, and before I even start there like to close out the Draymond part. I do think it's funny that we ask a lot of these guys in terms of media obligations and stuff like that. And we don't say right, that the media right. obligations that we're giving them is a distraction, but Draymond <laughs> right. doing a 30 minute podcast after a right. game. That's a distraction. Nonsense. It's like, you know what I mean? It's I refreshing as hell. It's, it's refreshing as hell. And we want access. And then somebody's giving us access to be like, nah, keep your access. <laughs> All of them should be well, podcasting but, you know, during the finals. <laughs> but listen, I, I, but but now that you guys say that, look, I don't know. I don't know Jake Fisher. Uh, maybe Vinny, you do, but I know uh, Draymond has a history with them. I know Brian Scalabrini here who spent some time out uh, with the Warriors has a history with them and was saying, hey, he here's a guy who likes to stir it up a little bit. I don't know, but he, he, his reporting was that teams are monitoring Draymond's podcast unlike they monitor media access because they're hopeful that Draymond will give them something that he doesn't give them in a, in a media space. And by the way, bad promo where he says it's the same thing here. That on, on the podcast. Why am I listening to the podcast? You, know, you should be talking up the podcast, bro. I, can't, I just I just I can't imagine that Draymond would say something on the podcast. First of all, and we'll come back to the X's and O's point, but there's more to unpack yep. here. I can't imagine that that Draymond is first of all, he's savvy enough not to give away any kind of state secrets, but I don't in know 2022. I don't think so. Okay, Michael, you, Michael, you talked about draws. You talked about your draws earlier yeah. in 2022. Th these teams know what kind of underwear these players like like what could this he possibly dude, say that they don't already know from their exactly. own advanced Not scouting? Maybe, maybe, but this is the same guy who I think says something really stupid after game two that affected game three in some way where he said, hey, the officials, I've earned the right. He used the word differential, but I know what he was trying to say. I've earned the right to get, quote, differential treatment from the officials. That's stupid. Don't say that because, well, what do you think is going to happen in game but that's three? Not, You're not going to get the benefit not, of the doubt. That's not, that's, not, that's, not, that's not strategic, though. You know what I mean? Well, that, I get that it. Wasn't, that, right? wasn't the, that wasn't but the smartest also not thing smart. to say. That, that right. you, you're daring the league to, you know, basically tee you up very early or whatever the case may be. I get you. But in mind, it's, it's way too savvy to say something that's not common sense. Like, if you listen to him and he's talking about Al Horford and Derek White and Marcus Smart shooting threes, like that's something that we all saw. Like, hey man, those guys are being given a lot of space. Like he's not saying something that's going to, you know, that's not breaking, he's not breaking the code or anything like that. But coaches do, and coaches will listen to podcasts and things like that to try to gain any little type of competitive. Yeah, yeah, that's all. But I don't think you're getting any schematic advantages. Because Draymond's not even in the coach's room. Like, he can talk about whatever he's talking about, but it's not like he's going to Ron Adams or Mike Brown or whomever, you know, while coming straight out of the coach's room either. You know what I mean? Like, I, I just think we have, we've chosen to blow that up because Draymond hasn't played well. If he did play well, we would have nothing to say. And to Draymond's point, it's almost like the end dictates the process. Because Draymond didn't get thrown out of game two, he thinks everything that he did throughout the game was correct. But if you wound up getting thrown out, then clearly it wasn't going to be correct. It's a, it's judgment call that's out of your hands. Similar to him doing his own podcast or whatever. You know what I mean? But if he has 16, 10, and, you know, eight assists or something tonight, nobody's going to say a damn thing, nor should we. So back to schematics. How do the Warriors back to get some help? How, how, does, how do the Warriors know. get yeah. some help? Y'all, I don't know if there's multiple paths. Like, I, I will say this towards Holly's Boston Celtics. There are far more paths for Boston to win this series. Golden State might have the best path, but it might be the only path. The only path is to perhaps junk the game up on defense, make Boston panic, and then you get out in the secondary transition points and everything else. Because to me, it almost looks like, <clears throat> excuse me, it almost looks like, they have to play this game knowing they're going to be 10 points down. 
and you have to claw and fight your way back into the game and rely on Boston to make mistakes as opposed to you just being the better team. Maybe they are the better team. And, it, and put it like this, they could not be the better team and still win this series. You know what I mean? Like, you can basically mm. bait the other team into playing silly and making mistakes. Like, in some ways, this almost strikes me as a more mature Memphis Grizzlies team that is just bigger than you, and they can beat you in more ways, but Golden State just had more savvy. You know what I mean? In in that series, they had the one bad game, the five, but they had job. more savvy. Yeah. And Memphis didn't, ha- yeah. Memphis didn't have job, whereas, you know, Boston has these two guys. Jordan Poole has to play a lot better. Like, you need a secondary yeah. shot creator. Like, even Clay hitting shots, that's kind of an inevitable thing. You're not going to shift your mm-hmm. defense because Clay is hitting shots. Either he's going to make them or he's going to miss them. But as far as someone that's going to shift your defense and make life easier for Steph, that's got to be a guy like Jordan Poole if Draymond is not going to be shooting at the rim. Other than that, once again, you got to make Boston turn it over. And if they don't make Boston turn it over, I don't know if they win this series. Key phrase you just used, Vinny, make life easier for Steph. And I got to tell you, through three games in this series, and I didn't, I didn't know it could go any higher. My respect for Steph Curry and my, uh, my, my admiration for him, it's higher now. <laughs> they rely on him so much. He has to be almost perfect for them to have a chance. Like, you know, Jason Tatum had that three for 17 game uh, in game one and Boston won. Steph Curry goes three for 17. Golden State's going to lose by 35 points. It's just like he can't have an off game. And I'll be curious to see how he how he uh, moves around tonight because they almost they almost can't afford Steph Curry at 75% or 80%. That's not enough for them. They need all of Steph all the time just to be uh, just to have a fighting chance. And here's the other part. Steph doesn't take a rest. And I don't mean like literally taking a rest or playing 48 minutes. I mean, there's points in games, there's possessions where, man, you're winded and you don't have to take control of that possession. You know what I mean? Where you don't have to move around like somebody else can go and get his own shot or whatever the case may be. You can sort of rest a little bit. He's getting hunted on defense because he's getting in foul trouble and they're trying to get the extra fouls on him. If he's playing with two fouls in the first quarter, they're going to try to get the third one. So you're hunting him on that end. And on offense, he facilitates so much movement for everybody else, even if the play isn't called for him. He's having to run around and move around, navigate and negotiate screens, even if somebody else has the ball. So it's almost like he's exhausted. I'm like amazed at the stamina more than the performance itself because he's playing against really good defense and making really, really tough shots and still making good decisions. The second that he actually takes a breath to exhale, that's when the Celtics go on their run because nobody else can do what he does. And maybe that's where you start asking, man, maybe they shouldn't have held on to all of those young guys. Maybe you should have got one more guy that can go out and get it on his own. Yeah. Hey, um, Listen, this was great, but you're right. Like this series tonight is game four. Game five is Monday, right? Game five. So tonight I mean, determines yeah. who wins this series. Tonight determines who wins this series. I agree with that. Not I game agree. five, game four. Okay, so I agree. I was about to say goodbye, but I'll just I'll just ask you this. And, and, and maybe it's obvious, and, you know, and maybe it was lightning and, and a once in a lifetime occurrence. But it's the Warriors, so I kind of feel obligated to ask it. So if they end up 3 one, they can't pull a Cleveland. This is for you. There's no way like if it's 3 one. That's the wrap. They could they could not go back to Golden State, get it back to Boston and then have a game seven at home. I mean, because they, they still have that game seven at home and then get it there in their back pocket. So if it's 3 one Boston cancel Christmas. That's the wrap. This Golden State team cannot mount the same type of comeback that Cleveland did against them in 2016. That's what you're saying. Can't happen. Unless they get, you know, some type of stimulus package from the league or something like that. I don't see how <laughs> okay. you go down 3-1. They, they, yeah. they, when yeah. they went down 3-1, only because there's Oklahoma precedent in 2016. For yeah. Yeah, but here's the even the precedent against Oklahoma City, you had a much younger Clay Thompson, a much younger Andre Iguodala, a much younger Draymond Green. Like we, mm-hmm. these are almost like the old Celtics to me. When I say old Celtics, I mean Larry Bird, McHale, Reggie Lewis. You know what I mean? Where Reggie Lewis is the guy that's trying to bridge the gap a little bit and augment the older players. You know what I mean? Because the longer that's this series that. goes, 
you're playing so you're playing so many minutes on those young players. Boston's experienced, but they're young. They can run for days. Right. So I, I don't know if well, they can pull three straight games out. Yeah, and that whole experience thing is less and less of a factor as as this thing goes on. Um, all right, so so what my point is, do, so you're saying do or die tonight for Golden State? Are you free Monday? Are you gonna be where are you gonna be on Monday? You gonna be in the Bay uh, for Game Five? You gonna be back in yep, the crib? I'm be in the Bay. No, I'll be in, I'll, so let's I'll do, be here until it's done. So let's do this. Let's let's come through on Monday. God willing, and the creek don't rise because I think I fear if we wait till Friday. At this rate, we might be several days removed from the conclusion of the finals. So, so I, I don't want to be talking a week from today where the finals are long gone. So come through Monday. Let's, 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 uh, let's move your appearance next week up if you don't mind. Hey, thanks for watching Brother From Another on YouTube. Make sure you hit subscribe before you leave and be sure to watch us 3 to 5 p.m. Eastern Time on Peacock. Appreciate you.